You don't even care, she said a few times to me, while holding back tears. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ara's own stories. Today we have a story where this wife had an affair with her co-worker, but she got caught by his husband. She pleaded not to divorce her, but this husband showed her no mercy. Let's see how this story ends first post here, but I've been lurking since my first D-Day, only recently becoming active. A bit more than a year has gone by and through lots of self-reflection and therapy, I've finally built the courage to walk away from my wife. This is a very weird feeling, one I really don't know how to fully describe. I'm optimistic and scared, calm and anxious, happy and sad. My Fitbit says my heart rate is around 80 BPM, which is about 10 beats higher than usual. So, I decided to write this here as a reminder to myself not to give in. I thought making a list of all the things I've had to deal with over the 13 years we've been together, married for almost 8 might keep me on track to follow through with the divorce, if I get weak in the future at any point. So, here's a list of all the reasons I am leaving for my future self, she is an alcoholic. She gets obnoxious, verbally abusive, and violent when she drinks. She cheated on me with an employee that reports to her at work. They had bedroom activity at work during working hours, not to mention the hotels they booked. She made secret plans to meet up with an ex-boyfriend, using her work cell phone before I stumbled onto the text messages. After forgiving her for cheating, I discovered she had booked a hotel in August, 2021 during a night I was away. Once confronted, she denied and gaslighted me. A week after I left the house to stay with family, she finally admitted to sleeping with the same co-worker again. The one time she agreed to put a tracker on her phone, I discovered she had left the phone at her friend's house and had her friend text you pretending to be her. She claimed she was at Target and simply forgot her phone. She came home drunk in the middle of the day once saying she was at the gym. After finally agreeing to start a new job and put her partner out of my lives by blocking him on her phone and email, I discovered she was hiding a second cell phone and communicating with him through that device instead. On a night she claimed, she wanted a night to herself. She secretly met up with her partner for dinner, claiming she just wanted closure. The same night, she stayed at a hotel. Her best friend, who previously coerced her into $5,000 worth of debt and has cheated on her own husband with many partners, has been assisting your wife in all her affair and will continue to do so. Luckily, I have no kids since she terminated my child five years ago. I can sell the house, make the money and move on without any strings attached. I don't believe her when she says she will change. She has said this many times, and she never will. She has only gotten smarter in trying to hide her behavior. I can get out, build my own life the way I want it. Jesus Christ, just typing all that out makes me question why I stayed as long as I have. Edit. Thank you so much everyone for the outpouring of support. Today is kind of a crazy day, as she is being served while at work. I have the day off and I am moving my stuff out at the same time. So, while I'd love to respond to everyone, I am on a tight schedule today. Some frequent questions I have been receiving in messages. No, she does not know she is being served today. But two days ago I told her I was pursuing divorce and wanted her respect. She agreed, albeit after love bombing me, and promising she would make changes. I shot down all her attempts. I did not want to report her to HR, and I would advise against anyone else doing so. If I pursued divorce and she lost her job, I would have been on the hook for alimony. We both make roughly the same annually, so realistically she shouldn't be receiving anything from me. It's not easy to walk away after you've built so much with one person. A lot of this really only came about in the last year and a half, really. She had a drinking problem, but was always self-aware of her issues and worked hard to overcome everything. She went a long time without touching alcohol. She was sweet, kind, and nurturing for years, and it felt great to spend my time with someone like that. Once the affair started, she seemed to lean into all her negative behavior, and I just kept giving her chance after chance. And now she's used up all of her chances. The house is in both of our names. I do all the upkeep on the property. I intend on staying in the house to facilitate its sale, since she does close to nothing with the house. If she chooses to stay, legally I cannot kick her out, so going full no contact, while ideal, might be tough to do. I am moving my stuff to my father's house today, so I can bail and stay there if all fails. 
It feels good to get over that initial hump, but I know the road ahead is still lengthy and will be filled with many challenges. Ultimately, despite all the rough spots that occurred this past weekend, I'm feeling empowered that I am taking control of my life again. So, here is what has transpired since Friday. She comes home from work, and visibly upset and unstable, but trying her best to pretend that nothing happened. She denied ever being served the papers, and took note of things of mine that were missing, and noted the kitty carrier out. She demanded, I put everything back, put the kitty carrier away, that she was going out with a friend, and that I had better be home when she gets home. After she left, I packed up the car and went to my father's house. I did not feel safe with her the way she was acting. The ring doorbell captured her returning home a little after 10 p.m., then around 11.30 p.m. It captured her again in one of the strangest and most unsettling ways I have ever seen my wife behave. She walked out the front door and stood in the driveway for a moment, then began dancing and singing the chorus of The Boy Is Mine by Brandy and Monica. After singing the chorus of the song and a couple more verses, she walked back up the front stoop and tried to tear the ring doorbell out but she was unsuccessful and walked back into the house. She was obviously drunk, and I was very satisfied with my decision to leave the house and stay at my father's. I have saved the video and sent it to my attorney. On Saturday morning, her friend picked her up at 5 a.m. as they had plans for a day trip to shop at the outlets. I went home and investigated the house. Luckily, everything seemed all right and nothing was damaged by her. She came home in the early evening and still pretended that everything was all right and she was never served any papers. I ignored her and stayed to myself on the couch. Eventually she came and sat down, admitted to receiving the papers, then unleashed a number of different tactics on me to get me to drop the divorce. She threatened, mocked, begged, negotiated, pleaded, love-bombed and guilted me over the course of two to three hours discussing everything. I held firm, laid out my case that I was unhappy and wanted out, that I was tired of being mistreated by her, lied to, and emotionally tortured. Surprisingly, she admitted to enjoying treating me the way she has, as every time I stayed with her and endured, it evidently showed her how much I loved her. I quickly pointed out the dysfunction in that, which she brushed off as being just the way she is, and asserting that she will never sign any divorce papers. Things have calmed down, there's obvious tension in the house still but we are coexisting and keeping things cordial. My attorney has advised that she has seen this plenty of times in her years of being a divorce attorney, and once all her tactics fail, and she realizes that the divorce is not going to stop, she will turn to rage and go on the attack, so I'm preparing for that next. This is certainly the start of a very long battle, I'm sure, but I keep thinking of the goal at the end of all this, me, on my own and self-sufficient in my own place, not being tormented any longer. I absolutely cannot wait for that day. Get some cameras and install them on all common areas. Inform her that you have done so so you're not breaking any surveillance laws. Tell her it's for your protection and the household protection. Keep all contact to a minimum. Have your attorney handle all communication. Even though you are living in the same house, you no longer have to be roped into her manipulative behavior. Feel free to inform her that your attorney will be handling all communication from now on. Tell her to feel free to email you and your attorney any questions of moving forward. Buy a lock for your bedroom door. Do not respond to any threats or other verbal actions by her. Just record and send to your attorney. It's been a little over three weeks now since I served my wife with divorce. Once again, I greatly appreciate all the advice and kind words. This is a wonderful community that has really helped me, and many others navigate through heartbreak. Many have been reaching out to me asking for an update, so I thought I could give the news on events that have transpired, and maybe some of my own personal reflections on everything. Thankfully, things have calmed down. I took the advice of everyone here, my therapist, and my attorney and I left the house. I was hopeful we could coexist, and I can stay in my own home. But there was a night where things escalated, and I knew it wouldn't be possible to stay under the same roof as her. I was staying in the guest bedroom at the time. One night she had said something nasty, I forget what. Later on she knocked on my door lightly. I answered to find her in tears as she offered an apology for her actions. I thanked her and asked that she leave me be. After closing the door, she unleashed a fury of vulgarities at me on the other side of the door, then went downstairs and continued her tirade. I heard over and over among many heinous insults to me and my family. 
Luckily, there was no sign of impending violence, but I sat in the room above her as she continued cursing and yelling, hoping she would stop. She eventually did. That night, I slept with the door barricaded and made the decision to leave the next day. Once she left for work the next day, I began packing the rest of my things. Luckily, I work from home, so I had time before work and during my lunch break to pack up my car. After work was done, I jumped in my car with one of the cats and went to my father's where I have been since. It's peaceful here. The house is not occupied most of the time, and many of the rooms were used more for storage. Cleaning out one of the bedrooms upstairs and buying new furniture has been a fun project. The room I'm now staying in is quite cozy. For as long as I have been married, I have always wanted a gaming room, and that's what I've been working on turning this room into. I even bought myself a new bed. It's one of those adjustable bases and even has a built-in massage function. I may have gone a little overboard, but I wanted to be comfortable and excited about where I am living. As of typing this up, I can confirm I'm thrilled to be here. I even got my email confirmation for my Steam Deck, so that was a nice added bonus from Valve. It's as if they knew I was going through a tough time and needed something fun. There has been some communication between us, but very little. Since my wife does not clean or really know how to take care of the house, I have been visiting on weekends to check on things and grab any other items I may have left behind. Her tone has definitely changed. She has been begging me to call off the divorce, taking ownership of all things wrong with the marriage, offering to have the open policy I have been asking her for, and swearing that she called everything off with the guy she had an affair with. I'm not buying it. I know this version of my wife as I have seen it many times. Once the dust settles, she will revert back to her old, toxic habits. For now it's nice to hear directly from the source of my heartache that she is actually claiming responsibility for everything she has done, even if that gesture is a facade and short-lived. She is a person with many personal issues that I have taken an active role in assisting with. It's rather astonishing to sit back now and reflect on all the things I have helped her with throughout the years, all the ups and downs. I saw her last Sunday when I stopped at the house. The place is a mess, with empty bottles of wine scattered around. After I arrived at the house, she went into the bathroom to throw up, quite loudly. She came out and said she was hungover from drinking the night before. I maintained the grey rock method and didn't engage in any way, which only fueled her sorrow further. You don't even care, she said a few times to me, while holding back tears, clearly trying to bait me. She is scrambling with me being a manipulated toy to play with, and it isn't working. It makes me sad to see her like this, but I also lost my motivation to help her, mainly because I realized that there is nothing I can do for her anymore. Coming to terms with that really does feel refreshing. Sometimes I wonder why I stayed for as long as I did, but I'm content with how things have unfolded and with my decisions. I first found out she was cheating on me in April 2021, then found out she cheated again in August that same year. For many that would have been enough in itself, but I still stayed. As my therapist said to me, a year ago, I wasn't ready to walk away. I am now. I needed to see this through and confirm that the problem was not me. The problem is entirely her and there is nothing I can do about it. My options are to endure perpetual heartbreak or leave. I chose to leave. A year ago I did not realize those were the only cards on the table. I thought I could change myself and make the marriage work. I was wrong. My own family tried to coach me, but I needed to realize it myself without being told. That's the important part of leaving a spouse. It has to be your own decision, not someone else's. This is my decision. I am owning it, and I am improving my life little by little. There's a profound reward in learning a vital lesson in life. This hard-won knowledge is precious to personal development. I endured the hollow charade of her actions, because I had to learn on my own. I'm not in any way ashamed to admit I stayed throughout all the issues. I'm incredibly proud of myself for finally coming to terms with everything and taking the hard steps to move on with my life. And I'm pursuing all the things I had put off for a long time. I'm making a nice gaming room for myself, exercising a whole heck of a lot. A few years ago I wrote a book, but never pursued being published. I had another book I wanted to write, and I'm pleased to say that I have begun writing it. All these things I had put aside for years and made my marriage a priority. It's so incredibly refreshing to finally indulge in my own interests. I'm moving on, improving myself, and she is drinking herself into misery. I'm focusing on me, and it feels so great. 
My father's house has a lot of meaning to my family. Many, many memories here. My grandfather came here from Portugal when he was young and purchased the property. He grew up in Portugal living off the land and growing his own food. If he didn't do that, he didn't eat. So when he came here, he purchased a large piece of land, built a house, built a barn in the backyard, planted crops and an orchard. This house represented hope for a brighter future. He had horses, cows, goats, chickens, the whole deal. As my father and his siblings grew up, the land became less populated by livestock, and more a representation of family and freedom. My uncles began rock bands, and converted the horse stables in the barn to practicing spaces for their music. They played among whatever animals were left at the time. When I was born my father brought me here on the weekends. He and my mother divorced when I was only a few months old, but remained cordial. Weekends meant being free on this land with my dad. It was paradise for a child like me. No rules, lots of land to explore and play on, and a badass father who made me feel so loved and free. He bought me a dirt bike when I was young. I used to ride that bike all over the property, around the barn, on the front lawn. My grandmother used to complain that I was tearing up the grass. She'd come outside as I drove by the front of the house and yell at me to slow down, but I'd scoff at her and ride faster around the house and through the orchard. There were a few nights here when my father would open the window to his upstairs bedroom and climb out on the roof. He'd coax me out with him, and we'd lay on our backs in the middle of the night, engulfed in darkness while staring up at the stars together, talking about traveling the universe and whether there is life somewhere out there. Last night, I snuck out through that same window, sat on the roof in my pajamas, looked up at the stars and cried while pondering life. I cried partly due to sadness, but mostly because I felt that freedom and hope I once had when I was a kid in this house. Back then I was always so incredibly eager for what would come from life. I looked forward to growing up, being a good person and living an honest, fulfilling life. Those feelings vanished for a long time, but they are slowly emerging from beneath the rubble of a failed marriage. There's hope for a brighter future, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Edit, there were red flags from the start of us dating. After a month or two, I realized she had an issue with alcohol. She wasn't plastered drunk all day, but she would feel compelled to drink at very random times, and she was always a very obnoxious drunk. She had some aggressive incidents, but once everything was over she would reflect on everything and admit her faults. She was never shy to admit she had an issue, which prompted me to believe she could change, and she did a few times. There were periods where she would be alcohol-free for a year or two, then swear that she could handle it again, and begin drinking, and eventually she'd be sneaking alcohol around with her and drinking in the middle of the day again. I forget where I heard this before. But there's a quote that always stood out to me. Love is not solely celebrating the strengths of your partner, but also tolerating their weaknesses. Of course, there's a limit to how much weakness one should truly withstand. But I saw her alcohol issues as something I wanted to help her through. When alcohol wasn't at play, things with her really were beautiful. I believe she wanted to be a good person and overcome her issues. Then she met this guy at work and started sleeping with him. Up until then, she was clean for two years and had really put her life together nicely. Once she began cheating, everything changed. She embraced all the destructive impulses she had. Like alcohol, I thought she could overcome everything. Maybe she can, but I'm not going to wait around anymore. I'm too exhausted to try anymore. So as far as warning signs, well, there's no precise formula I can give you that can be applied to dating. Everyone has their own individual preferences in a partner, and you have to determine for yourself what you can and cannot withstand. I'm not thinking about dating right now, but after all this is over and I feel ready to, I may try dating again, and when I do, I think I'll avoid alcoholics. That'll be my own individual preference. She cheated, because it made her feel valued that him self-worth meant less than your love for her. She does it, because she's a black hole for attention. She likes living in a lifetime movie drama and is furious he isn't playing his part anymore. It doesn't mean she doesn't love him or want him around, but it does mean she doesn't know what a stable relationship should look like or how to maintain one, and she won't change until she has an actual reason to. I know it's easier to say to himself she never cared or that she never loved him, but taking that perspective leaves holes in one's understanding and feeling like what if. So, I say she does have feelings for him, I also say she doesn't know how to handle an adult relationship, and like a child she will misbehave as long as she knows him do nothing about it. It's compulsive at this point, 
he should stick to his plan and walk away. It's the only way he can heal, and only way she learns her actions are unacceptable is to make her single.